Okay, I approach the scene, um, full BSI, um, there, there any bystanders, uh, what is the, uh, the environment, uh, what, what are the, are there any hazards, daytime weather? And uh, resources. Um, I'd like five fire trucks and two ambulances and two police cars. Um, what's the mechanism of injury? And is the patient in distress? Um, no. Presentation of the patient found in, position the patient's found in, uh, assess C spine, uh, uh, LOC, check that the uh, patient is tracking me with his eyes. Um, Hi, my name is Matt. What is yours? Can you tell me where you hurt? Do you know what day and time it is? Um, do you hurt anywhere? Uh, do you know what happened? What's the mechanism of injury? Uh, if they're unconscious, hey, are you okay? Alert, verbal, pain, unresponsive. If they're unresponsive, first thing I do is airway, ABCs, DD. Check airway, check that it's open and clear. Um, possibly use suction or use uh, jaw thrust, manual maneuver if necessary. Then I go into breathing. I check the rate, quality, and rhythm of the respirations. Uh, whether if it's uh, below 10 or over 30, I use a BVM. If it's in the range from 10 to 30, I'd use, or 10 to 24, I'd use a uh, BVM. Anything over 30, I, uh, actually anything over 30, I'd use a BVM. Anything under, in that range, I'll use a non-rebreather. Uh, possibly if they are uh, unconscious to uh, keep the airway open, they wouldn't have a gag reflex, so I'd use an OPA. And... Uh, then I check the circulation. I uh, check the uh, I check the pulse. Make sure that it's uh, check the uh, rate, quality, and rhythm of the pulse in the corroded or the carotid and or corroded and the radial. Uh, then I want to know the skin color and temperature of the individual. Um, then I want to uh, do a deadly wet check. I want to open, expose, touch and feel the head. Are there any uh, deadly um, any deadly bleeds? I don't open, expose, and touch and feel the neck. Are there any deadly bleeds? I want to open, expose and touch and feel, and open and expose, open and expose, and expose, look and feel the uh, chest, are there, is there any deadly bleeds, I want to open and expose the uh, pelvis, no, abdomen, I'm going to check that, uh, are there any deadly bleeds, I want to open and expose and uh, look and touch the pelvis. Are there any deadly bleeds? I want to open and expose and uh, look and touch the uh, lower extremities. Are there any deadly bleeds? I want to open and expose the uh, upper extremities. Are there any deadly bleeds? Um, I want to...
open and expose uh, checking underneath the back uh, for uh, any deadly bleeds. Now I want to make a decision whether this patient is critical or if there's any interventions that are immediately required. Uh, in this um, in this sake, we'll say that uh, there isn't. Um, well, we could say that he's on a BVM, so I'd say the patient's critical based to, let's say the respirations are over 31. So we'll go with that. Now I'm going to do the primary survey. I'll check the head for DCAP BTLS ticks. Uh, also check, since this is a trauma survey, I'm going to check the... Um, see make sure I just want to make sure I controlled C spine I'm gonna have to look back on that and check but I'm pretty sure I did say that yeah I did um, okay so yeah so DCAP BTLS head uh, checking the for battle signs uh, raccoon eyes battle signs the behind the ears any sort of uh, swelling for any sort of contusion. Uh, frontal uh, raccoon eyes, also again, any kind of uh, contusion, the uh, inflammation. Any uh, blood draining from the uh, ears or any orifices on the face, uh, including the nose and mouth. Um, also, are the pupils equal and reactive to light? And, uh, let's see, and also, I think I said this already, but TCAT, BTLS, deformities, contusions, abrasion, punctures, burns, tenderness, lacerations, swelling, ticks is uh, tenderness, instability, and crepitus, and S is subcutaneous emphysema. Then I move to the neck, and check the neck for DCAT, B, uh, DCAT BTLS, tick, and uh, also check that the trachea is uh, midline. There's no JVD. Uh, and I'm going to move. Now that I'm on the neck, I'm going to ask my partner to uh, control C spine. Well, he was already controlling C spine. I'm going to ask him to put on a C collar. To measure the C collar, you take four fingers, you measure it from your trap to your the angle of your jaw, and uh, Anyway, so I want the, my partner to put that on uh, his neck. And uh, then I want to move down to the chest. Now I want to get the, what's the DCAP BTLS, or is there any DCAP BTLS ticks? Uh, also, is there, I'm oscillating the a ABC. APCs and the bases for uh, is there uh, any adventitious sounds coming from inside the lungs at all? Any uh, crackling, strider, any gurgling, any sounds present? Okay, no, there isn't. That's fine. Moving on. Um, any uh, paradoxal motion? No, okay. Move down to the abdomen, checking for DCAP, BTLS, ticks. Also, I'm looking for distension, rigidity, tenderness. Is there any distension, rigidity, or tenderness? Um, is, um, so there's nothing there. Okay, move down to the pelvis, DCAP, BTLS, ticks. Uh, there's nothing there. Is there propietism? Also, is there um, incontinence? Any fluids? Nothing. Okay. Move down to the lower extremities. Check for DCAP, BTLS, ticks. Check PMS, which is pulse motor sensories. Uh, check the pulse from the pedal on the foot. The left and right. Check that it's equal on both sides. Um, then I want to uh, have the patient uh, do gas pedal. I want him to push against my hands. Can you push against my hands? Okay, so he can. Can you pull away? Yeah, he can pull towards his, uh, towards, like this. 
back and forth. And he, he says he, or he can. I uh, ask him uh, which foot I'm squeezing. He can tell me on both sides. So he's, the sensory is good. So pulse PMS is good. Um, now I want to check the upper extremities. Check for DCAP, BTLS, ticks, and also for PMS again. Uh, with the upper extremities, I check the radial pulse. Uh, grab both arms. And I want to, just one second here. Get, so then I uh, do the, uh, <clears throat> lost my train of thought. What was it again? Where was I at? Oh yeah, okay. So upper extremities, pulse motor sensory, uh, check from the radial on both sides. Check that they're present on both sides. Also check motor. Can uh, can you squeeze my hands? Or can you squeeze my finger? All right? Okay, he can on both sides. Okay, we're good. Sensory, if I put a pen against your capillary or your uh, nail bed, and push, it's pretty hard not to feel that, unless you're really, yeah, anyway, yeah, he can feel both sides, he's good, okay, now at this point, I want to take um, the individual that's in charge of uh, the, my, my partner, that he's uh, control C-spine, he has a C-collar on, he's holding the head in position right now, and the uh, the, pos the position of the patient found is supine, so I want uh, three rescuers to uh, flip him on his back. Let's move him, let's, for all intensive purposes, let's say that the left side is injured, so let's uh, roll him onto his right side. But at a count of three, I want my partner who's uh, taking control of C-spine to uh, make sure all his partners move at the same time so there's no movement in the spine. Okay, let's count of three. One, two, three. Okay, let's check the side. We're checking the back for DCAP, BTLS, ticks, and uh, is there any injury at all? Is there anything down there? No? Okay, we're good. Let's flip them back. Okay, at this point, uh, it's a trauma, so let's throw them on a spine board. And uh, when we put them on the spine board, I want to uh, I have my other partner before to grab the spine board. I forgot to mention. And uh, what we'll do is we'll strap them to the spine board with spider straps. Uh, first thing we'll do is we'll have him uh, put in, uh, strapped in at his chest first. Then we'll go for his uh, pelvis, and then we'll go down to his lower extremities. And it will go in that order, uh, and the head will be the last thing to strap in. And we won't use chalk blocks or anything, we'll use uh, rolled up towels. And uh, when you put the uh, strap across, we'll make sure it's along this part right here on the forehead because uh, you don't need much pressure to hold it down. So we'll do that. Now after the back, I want to decide that based on the respirations were 31, so we had BVM. Uh, let's say we had, uh, let's say the patient was unconscious, so we'll... Uh, we had an OPA in him, right, which is an oral pharyngeal airway, right, and uh, yeah, so we're good. He's uh, on the spinal board, he's got a BVM, respiration is 31, uh, so we decide it's a load and go based on the respirations at 31. Um, anything over 24 is considered a load and go, so obviously he's a load and go. So we're off to the hospital, and uh, I'm just learning about the vitals and uh, sample we'll do next, and then the secondary survey, and that will all be done en route to the hospital.